in in the Catholic Church, there is there are. You know, I, I love that phrase of Newman. There is nothing on this earth so ugly as the Catholic Church, and nothing so beautiful. And and I believe, I believe both sides of that. I believe that there is terrible ugliness. As the ugliness, I want to see collapse. I don't want to see the entire church collapse the way apartheid did. But I do believe that the day's got to come when, you know, when the whole church comes to realize you can't live that way. You, you, it's much healthier to admit we can be wrong and so we can fix problems. Are we going to? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't tell you. But, I, I mean, obviously I can tell you, if we don't, then I very much fear for the, uh, the future of the church because people will leave it in great numbers, as they are now. You know, they, well, it's already happening, isn't it? In large numbers of people just saying, I don't believe that, I don't want to be part of that. And that will continue. And they've got lots of excuses that, you know, new numbers are coming into the church in Africa and Asia and, what, and so we, we, don't, we don't worry about the... But, you know, they've got to pay attention to it sometime. That, that's another phenomenon of, you know, the, the, the conservatives uh, those who do accept that system uh, now coming into positions of power. Yes, it's a, it's a very worrying. I, I, I feel, you know, after all this time, I, I feel an outsider in, the, in many ways in the church. I had a wonderful professor when I was at the gymnasium in Innsbruck back in the 1950s. Anton Egger, whom I mentioned a few places online. And he felt exactly the same way toward the end of his life. He died a few years ago in his late 80s. And he also was very, very angry with the previous pope. Of John Paul. John Paul. Yeah. He, he believed that he destroyed, was in the process of destroying the process made in Ver by Vatican II, yeah. that John Paul had, was more dangerous to the future of the church, particularly because he was looked at as something like a saint by so many, because he was a good man, but he was not the one who followed the call of Vatican II, yeah. and in a way destroyed, was in the process of destroying the, process, the progress that had been made. He was a contradiction. He did wonderful things. Mm -hmm. He had great, great strengths. Um, but nobody's perfect, and to put him up as perfect was very dangerous. Um, you know, he, he, yes, he undermined the council terribly. Um, you know, as a, that, that story about the ordination of women, that was all his time, mm -hmm. which is almost a conscious decision. We can't trust the bishops, so we won't ask them. Um, you know, killing off collegiality. Um, he did nothing about the abuse crisis. And yet he was the one It arose during his time and he did nothing. He wrote one very weak, poor letter to the bishops of this country, but it was a very poor letter, and that was in 1992. Otherwise, he did nothing. Uh, in other words, he failed before the, the major moral crisis to hit the church in his time. And that's saying something big, isn't it? When a pope mm -hmm. failed to meet the biggest moral crisis challenge of his time as Pope. And yet he did, he failed, there's no other word for it. 
anything that's happened, and that isn't much, has happened under Benedict. At the, same, been better. Yeah, at the same time, I am suspicious that Benedict was never in support of Vatican II. And he's now doing, finally, what I think he has been wanting to do all along. Well, as you well know, there's, there's Ratzinger I and Ratzinger II. <laughs> and people yeah. love quoting Ratzinger I again, but, you know, really it's, it's sort of so outdated now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. he, he, he would say... He had a big change of heart. He puts down the year 1967, coming out at the time, and, and saying, oh, you know, please, Joseph, how can you do this? You're, you're too good a theologian to, to write this nonsense. But he'd done it. And, and that, that upset me because I, I, it is bad theology to quote the, the dead popes against the living ones. Well, I think you have the answer, the power part. Yes, but it's, it's sad to see a, a good man corrupted. And, and that, I mean, uh, well, yeah, I wouldn't know his inner motives. He'll answer to God for it, not me. Um, but, but that one, I really, I, I did feel he'd come close to you know, selling his soul for, for out of loyalty, a misguided loyalty to, to the Pope. So what do you see as your task? Not much. I can't change the church on my own. I'm, I'm not a Nelson Mandela. Um, you know, I, I, I I don't do much. I, I, I'm giving this talk now. That will be the first time for a few years that I've done anything really, you know, outrageous. And we'll see what the uh, we'll see what the response is. The biggest church is the Catholic Church. The second biggest is ex-Catholics. After that come Baptists and, and others. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a figure. What is it? Ten, twenty million ex-Catholics in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, to try to mobilize them is difficult because many of them would say, you know, I've, I've thrown that out, I'm not going back there. Mm -hmm. uh, they've left in disgust or in despair or, and then the young are leaving in vast droves. Uh, I don't know about the church here, but the church in Australia, if it weren't for the migrants, we'd be in desperate straits. It's the migrants who keep it alive. Mm -hmm. Well, they may, but their children won't. Their children will grow up, you know, and adopting many of the ideas of others around them. And, uh, you know, the people I talked to, say, in that tour, you know, four years ago or this time, mm -hmm. they'll be mainly elderly people who were upset by the church, but not going to leave it. Uh, but they've all got the same story. My children never go to church anymore. And isn't that sad after, you know, we put them through schools and all the rest of it. And this is one, and, and, and you know, you were mentioning this, the, the, the conservative priests getting in. It's, it's, it's a trend. It's, the church is becoming smaller and more conservative, you know, consisting only of those who are in certain positions of power who, who do follow that papal line. Now, something, I, I don't think that can go on forever. See, you mentioned technology, but what really changed before the technology was that in the West, Catholics became more educated. They, they went much further in schooling than in the past. They went to university. And, and that started them thinking. And they wouldn't take would no longer accept, you know, being humble, obedient servants. Yes, Father, yes, Father. Uh, education achieved that. Now the technology's come on on top of it to give this marvellous, you know, means of communication. But I think the education came first, and that was the, the really important one. Um, I, I, I don't know where all this is going to 
end and how it will end up. I do believe that the day will come somehow that when there's change it will be dramatic, it will be a, a, a collapse as it were. Well, maybe the only thing that's going to collapse though is in a sense the bad part. Oh well, yes, I don't want the good part. That's yeah. not, you know, I do have a fear that when the bad part collapses, as it were, the lot will collapse. And that would be, I, I, I don't want to see that at all. I mean, there's so many good things happening. You know, some of the nuns here are beautiful people. And they're doing their very best. And you, you know, you can meet that anywhere you go. I mean, there, there are several issues that any one of them could... Uh, another big one is, is uh, original sin. See, yeah. if you read, as I'm sure, of course you have, um, you know, the Council of Trent, mm -hmm. it's all based on Adam and Eve. But now we know Adam and Eve is a story, a good story, a powerful story, a mm -hmm. rich story. But it's a story, it's not, you know, what happened. And yet Trent is really based on, on the idea that this is what happened. And, and yet, you know, if you, how can you have original sin if you had no original parents to commit the sin? Um, and and it even they go as far as death entered the world through the sin of Adam and Eve. Well, excuse me, but we now know death was there a very long time beforehand. I mean, an issue like that could come up and could could theoretically cause people to say the Pope was wrong.